Now, uh, a lot of you might not be familiar with the term MCN, so Courtney, if you'd like to elaborate a little bit more on what YouTube considers to be an MCN or multi channel network. Sure, so uh, multi channel networks are partners or companies that aggregate a lot of channels, sometimes tens of thousands of channels on YouTube for commercial gain, as well as to provide a benefit to the channel. So the benefits can range from uh, cost promotion, sales, production, facilities, etc. Uh, the network started because companies saw that creators were having to do everything themselves. So they had to film, they had to find production facilities, they had to try to cross promote themselves, connect with advertisers. And so these partners came in and saw that they could get economies of scale by working with them and helping them. So the only thing they had to do was focus on creating great content. So some of the original networks that appear, as I'm sure you're all familiar with, Machinima, Maker, and Pulsar. And they were some of our largest aggregators on the platform. Um, and, and what you saw is that you know, these networks are becoming the next generation of media companies. Um, so you know, they're not unlike the TV networks. They are centered around a demo or vertical, and they, they build an audience around a value proposition, and then they're able to sell that targeted audience plus the brand. Um, and so you know, what we're seeing is they, they cross-promote, cross-sell, commission content, produce it. Um, we're seeing this. That, that these types of networks are um, showing us that there's been this evolution in the marketplace. So you've probably seen a lot of activity lately in terms of some of the acquisitions and the investment. So you saw Time Warner invested $30 million in Maker, and Comcast and Churn invested um, $30 million in full screen. And then some of the acquisitions recently of um, Revision 3 by Discovery, and the acquisition of um, Tasting. So, I'm sorry, not to use it. Um, awesome is TV. So, so what we're seeing is that even though there's these really large aggregators on YouTube, we're seeing a different model emerge, which is one that's a little bit smaller. So some of our largest ones can have up to 75,000 channels, like Awesome is TV. Uh, make around 60,000 channels. But this new model is more focused on really um, collaboration and community. So you're seeing something like a taste mode, which um, so they just opened a production facility in in Santa Monica, 7,000 square foot, focused on food. They fly chefs around the world into um, into LA, and they get there, and they, they create, they collaborate together, and they also build platforms to ensure that there's a lot of collaboration. Um, also, Big Frame is another example of this type of model, where instead of having you know, tens of thousands of channels, you're maybe having 50 to 200. So it's really interesting to see this evolution of networks come to YouTube. Uh, you know, something just to note is that we don't want creators to feel like in order to be successful on YouTube, they have to join the network. And YouTube is really committed to making sure that we have a level playing field for both the channels um, that are both within and outside of networks in terms of resources and support. Yeah, I think we need to get all of those. Uh, uh, uh. We exist. Yeah. We exist? Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Was that epic? <laughs> All right, well, let's just go ahead and jump into the brass tacks here. Um, I mean, there's a lot of creators out here that just want to know the question, like, should I join a network or stay independent? Do um, you think it's easier to grow as uh, an individual, or do you think that that production support is there is a question support really is. So, uh, there's every, lots of asterisks that come with that. <laughs> well, every, every, every network is different, right? So do you think that is it, there is a specific network that might work for you as an individual, or what are the pros and cons associated with that? Uh, I guess, I, I'll still jump back, I guess, to, you know, should you join one to be more successful? You know, I guess there is, to a certain degree, you know, it's getting harder and harder to get discovered on YouTube. Um, so if you have a possibility, if you make sure it's in your contract, uh, that specifically states that they have to find ways to work, and they have to find ways to get you into other people's videos that have 50,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, depending on who you are, and like trying to figure out that cost promotion, don't trust them that they're actually going to do it if it's not in your contract. Um, I, I don't know if, I, 
I like the old-fashioned way, definitely, but uh, of just actually reaching out and trying to find people to collaborate with in an organic way. But you definitely will have a, a leg up if the network has that as one of the values to work with other people. Um, it's usually the type of thing that you know if you're if you're brand new and starting out, you know I do not understand the model of tens of thousands of YouTube channels if you're a creator. They're building these networks off the backs of the up and coming creators. It's not on the backs of people like us that have become super successful on the site. They have to make very specific deals to even work with us that are mutually favorable. When it comes to the up and coming person, you're not going to be able to negotiate the same way. They're going to try to take more of your revenue, etc. They're hoping that you are going to become the next big thing and be under a contract that you never would have signed if you already were the next big thing, combined with needing to aggregate all of you together to give them a lot of money. And all that investment is not going to necessarily roll down to you in the middle. So I don't really get the idea of joining any network that has 60 or 70,000 people in it because you're not going to get that support that you're probably wanting from the network in the first place. If you can build yourself up, like she was saying, you don't need to join a network, though I have there's a whole other conversation about things that YouTube are doing that are making it very difficult to be independent. That's a different thing, maybe a different question. But if you can build yourself up to a certain point, then the network can have some value for you and you can have that leverage to actually negotiate a good deal with them because you already have built something for yourself and it isn't the idea that the network can say that we're the reason for this happening will go away because you've already built yourself to that point. Well, no one network, uh, no one business model is exactly the same, right? Uh, there's there's many different networks out there. There's many different options of business models. Now, Courtney and Tim, both of you come from very unique perspectives. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on? Jennifer. Yeah, or yeah. Jennifer, yeah. sorry. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean, um, I think there's a lot of validity in what you're saying, and I think it's um, part parcel of why when we built out our network, we had a very specific um, mission to keep it small, very boutique, um, focused on high-quality, premium lifestyle of content creators. So, as I said, we have 50 channel partners. And I think also, I think you also have to, when you're thinking about, um, do you need to join a network to be successful, it really determ it, it is determined by what success is for you. So for us, um, you know, we're not um, supporting production. We're not, that's not one of our, um, our, our value adds. What we're doing is um, equal parts uh, partner management, um, dedicated partner management, um, because we have 50 channel partners have a one-to-one -one relationship with our channel partners. We help them grow through doing collaboration within our network, so you have a very like-minded um, audience that you're exposed to. And then um, direct sales, our uh, company focuses on direct sales. We have um, East Coast and West Coast um, sellers who are bringing um, to bear uh, not only media, but brand content opportunities to our partners, something that more than likely they wouldn't have access um, on their own. Certainly they could get brand content deals on their own, but being able to make that into a, you know, a six and seven figure deal is something that you can only do if you bundle it immediately. So you know, that, sort of, um, that could be um, a success perspective of what a partner might be looking at to sort of level up their, um, their game on the platform. Yeah, I think they, I mean, going, going along with that, I think it's, it just depends on what your objectives are. And so maybe cross promotion is the most important to you, but if you look at someone, you look at one of the networks that they collected, they started off as a traditional talent agency. And now they moved into producing and distributing content and helping creators really leverage that direct to fan relationship. I um, mean, you see, you see what they've done with, with Freddie Wong and the video game high school, too, right? They got him the Dodge uh, promotion for that will, that will be featured in, in Series 2. Um, and then they're also going to be selling that across different platforms. They also help partners get into other avenues like TV and movies. They helped Fred with his first long feature length movie um, that was licensed by Nickelodeon. And it was the top cable movie of the year at that time. And then, you know, they helped Dambo with Annoying Orange get a 10 series part on TV. Um, they partnered with toy makers and, uh, you know, some of the brick and mortar companies like JCPenney to, to distribute branded products. So, in that sense, if, you know, if that's something you're looking for, you, you can, there's different networks that offer different services. But we also have tons of examples of partners that have succeeded not being in networks. If you look at Michelle Fawn, right, 4.5 million subscribers, she did an original uh, content deal with us. Um, you look at Ryan Higa, right, Toyota just approached him to, to help um, with the, the Toyota app and he was in a YouTube commercial. He's our top third um, subscribers of all time. Um, 
you, know, you look at uh, um, Jenna Marbles, um, Ray William Johnson just signed this script deal with Fox. So I, I feel like there's a lot of examples where um, you can be successful in and outside of the network. So we work with, uh, I'm from Alloy Digital, um, and we work you know, less, with less than 100 creators right now. Um, you know, ones that we really have hand selected, that we feel you know, really you know, fit, fit in well with our, the DNA of our company. You know, so that means you know, ideally big enough that we can sell brand sponsorships for, um, ones that align with our kind of core verticals um, you know, of entertainment, comedy, uh, gaming and women's lifestyle, and you know we you know we provide you know advertiser uh, solutions. Um, you know, we, we've been working with the big brand advertising community for you know over a dozen years, far you know far before YouTube was even around, selling digital marketing programs across uh, you know the open web, and you know we have been building on that success for for a long time, and so it was really a natural transition for us to get. You know, deep into the YouTube space, you know, to be able to provide those monetization services, you know, to emerging creators, and you know, we've done a really remarkable job of doing that over the years. Um, you know, and we also provide you know opportunities for exposure. So if there's up an up and coming kind of sketch comedy act, you know, that's starting to break on YouTube, you know, we can we can you know see that and promote that, you know, to our Splash community, for example, which. You know, it was huge on YouTube, but also has a huge destination website that can offer some tremendous exposure, you know, to help uh, creators gain new subscribers. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like we've done a really good job at that. Um, and so we're not, you know, we're not in the business of working with 100,000 creators, but we feel like, you know, for those that we do get into business with, um, there's a tremendous opportunity to really de develop a, a digital media brand together. Yeah. Well, some of those examples like um, Freddie W and Dangbo were already established channels, right? So they already have this, this massive following. So the expectations in negotiation for a channel like that versus somebody who just starts out with a few thousand, a few hundred subscribers is going to be completely different in the negotiating process. What expectations should you have for network support? Um, versus intellectual property rights, giving stuff like that up. I mean, what, what should you expect in the negotiating process if you're considering that? Well, you should expect that they're gonna to try to take way more percentage than they should of your revenue from dollar <laughs> one. Uh, they shouldn't be taking anything from dollar one unless they're providing you value. When they provide you the value, you can share in those profits. Um, so that's definitely something that you're gonna to have to deal with they're all going to say that you know they need to be taking that huge percentage from you and just keep fighting it. Like you know, if they actually care about you, they want you to be a part of their company. Uh, they should be willing to negotiate with you. And if any of them are sitting, like when you negotiate with them, if any of them just give you that hard line, it's not going to be a company that you want to work with if they're working that way. They pretty much just send you a boiler template contract, no matter who you are. We even still get that sometimes. They're just like they throw it to you, and then it's your job to tell them. Okay, now we have to rip this apart and change it all, whatever. They're just, you know, it's part of like business instead of just sending their standard contracts sometimes and you're supposed to negotiate. Step one, my passion is being quiet, so I haven't said <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do definitely, it's, it's so difficult to, to know, like, because you, you hear so, so many promises from this, like, so if we're going to help to build your channel, goes and stuff that we can offer you. But it's so difficult to know what they're actually going to bother to give you unless you have the experience of, of working with them. Like, I, I find, like, the, the idea of the, just, just the question, is it, is it going to be good to go up a network as an independent, is that you can, you can do all of, your, all, all of your research, but it's, it's so difficult to know unless, unless you've gone through that. That you also just don't want to just jump into it to have the experience of, of learning what it's like to be with a network. I've I've been with a network once and I was really lucky in that um, the contract that I signed with them was one where I could uh, leave at any point with a month's notice. And for me, that was a really, a really great opportunity to be like, oh well, this this will let me try working with them. I can I can see what it's going to be like and see how many of these promises they're actually going to follow through. Um, 
And then my experience was, was that I was with them for eight months and nothing was different at the end of that eight months. And then so I left. And, you know, when my advice as someone who deals with a lot of people that are interested in doing networks is um, ask for partner testimonials. Like, is there somebody within your network that I can talk to to find out what their experience is like? Um, or even better, know some people that are in the network that you can contact directly because otherwise you might be getting somebody that is more favorable, that was a more favorable testimonial than somebody else. Um, also, I'd add to that. That's a, that's a very good advice, as is, it's hard to find because the way this ecosystem has worked out, who left? Try to talk to the people who left the network and find out why they left, and that's also part of the conversation. Social Blade, if you guys aren't familiar with socialblade.com, that gives you a lot of insight into uh, what channels are currently with the network. That's a great point, but much harder to find who's left. <laughs> I think another thing is too, um, you know, if you if you feel you're getting that boilerplate standard agreement and, and <coughs> that you want to be negotiating that. Um, you know, it's, it's well within your right to say, you know, this is a CPM that I'm getting now. Educate yourself, learn what a CPM is, you know, make sure that you understand your YouTube analytics and understand your current assets revenue and what you're generating now and, um, you know, make the network work for you. Make them come back to you and say, well, here's a revenue projection for the next two years of how we're going to increase your revenue. Or if it's a network that, you know, does production support, uh, to your point, like, make sure that, you know, you can see in writing what their, um, what they're proposing that they'll do for you, or what um, promotions that they're going to give you, like make them do the work for sure. Yeah, never a good. I think easy advice. Never one click. There's a lot of networks out there that are like, go to this link and just sign up your channel and you're part of our network and we never even spoke to you. So don't ever do that. Like uh, if anything, make sure you talk to a human. Don't just click the button that gives them the revenue. Something that we've been talking to YouTube a lot about is like hoping and wanting. I have said this a lot of times. There's copyright school on YouTube. You know, you, have, you did something wrong, you have to go through copyright school in order to continue going on. I think there should be MCN school, and no channel should be able to join a multi-channel network without some information being given to them, making them understand that they're giving their revenue to somebody else to collect, they're not a YouTube partner, they're partnered with them, etc. But these types of things that they at least had to go through and saw something to make them understand what exactly it is, and be told that they don't need to join to make revenue, because that is a misconception that you need to join a network to monetize your content, which is not the case. So let's go ahead and jump into revenue since that seems to be coming up a lot. Um, as far as uh, different types of monetization through a network and as, as an individual um, credit integrations and stuff like that, um, do you find it's easier to, to try to do the ad sales on your own as independents or um, as, as the networks here, you know, as far as your ad sales teams are concerned and stuff like that? You know, how many people do you have working on that? You know, uh, how is that holding out and benefiting? Sure. Um, uh, for Kim Community, we have um, we have four full-time uh, salespeople, two in the East Coast, two in the West Coast, that are working full-time um, to bring uh, deals and opportunities for our channel partners. Again, we have 50 channel partners. We've got you know, four people working full-time for, for 50 uh, content creators. Um, and uh, you know, I think what um, what I hear a lot from our current partners is they'll get contacted by PR um, reps from different brands a lot. We've got this product, would you do a video about it? Um, and you know what, what we're able to do is is take that. Um, so you know, um, let's say it's a it's a kitchen um, a, manu a, a kitchen product manufacturer. Um, introduce us to that contact and let's see if we can actually make this much bigger because you might be either getting this offer to do something for free, just here take a product, talk about it and you can do a giveaway, or they might be, you know, throwing you a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars, but you know, we have the ability to um, to go a lot deeper in, in bundle and media, which is the pre roll, the display ads and everything surrounding that and, and you know make that into a much bigger deal so that not only are you getting um, revenue for your for talent and your integration, um, but you're also getting you know your channel roadblock for a month um, at you know really high CPM. So I think that um, one of the things that I hear is we, um, much like Tim, we're really hand selecting who we're bringing into our network, and um, you know I, I we definitely talked to a lot of um, content creators who have main channels that have decided to remain independent, um, and I think that the one area that we always talk about which is their sort of sticking point is the, you know, 
know, they're getting a lot of inbound requests from advertisers, but they don't really have a, a way to kind of turn that into something bigger, and that's where we feel that we can have that idea. And also, the, the new YouTube has a 12,000 person sales team. We work with over 2,000 advertisers, and we've um, the team is really key in, in connecting creators to advertisers. Um, and so some of the most recent ones was JR Sports Brief. He, he's an independent creator, um, and, they, and the sales team worked with Capital One um, on the NCAA sponsorship in Atlanta. And so they, the, the YouTube sales team created a three-pronged sales approach for three creators. Two of them were on the Big Frame Network and one was independent. And they went to Atlanta and filmed um, original content, posted it on their site, and then Capital One also uh, promoted it by playlisting that. Um, and they also created branded content for Trubu. Um, and, and Capital One is, is really excited to work with, with JR Sport Brief, and, and this will continue in the future. Um, another one that they did was with one of our YouTube adventurers, um, Peter Rabel, and uh, it was with Land Rover. Um, and so Land Rover came to YouTube and had no intention of working with the creators. Oftentimes, these advertisers have never even heard of YouTube networks or understand the power that the creators can bring. And the YouTube sales team um, came up with this idea of a, of a road trip called In Transit that, that Peter was going to go on. And so it started off at this Land Rover um, Experience Center where he spent, experimented with a few different Range Rovers. It was very you know, intimate, um, authentic experience. Um, and again, it created a lot of custom content around it. So we have a lot of examples where our sales team is bringing these brand and integration deals to the creators that, that, that aren't in networks. At Alley, we have about sales team of about 30 people. Um, about 20 of those are actual sales reps on the street, you know, working with Fortune 1000 advertisers and their agencies of record. Um, you know, I think that's what, probably one of the most valuable things that uh, a media company or MCN or network could, you know, can provide to talent that has size. Um, because frankly, if you're independent, I'm not sure how you would have those relationships. I mean, they take a long, long time to develop. Um, and build, and there's a lot of trust that's involved because you know, you know, a lot of the advertisers we've worked with, we've worked with for years, and you know, we get the campaign briefs, you know, months ahead of time, and go through a very formalized process to submit proposals and, and back and forth, you know, levels back and forth negotiation, which can go on for months, um, and so there's a kind of very formalized process within the you know the advertising community, and. I, I don't see how that can happen um, unless it's just like on a one-off basis. Um, and so I think that's something really valuable that a network can provide. You know, if if you're someone that fits well within uh, you know what they're selling. I mean, I agree definitely in terms of like I have absolutely no idea how I would as, <laughs> as myself figure out sort of some kind of like big brand integration deal going through that process. So everything you talked about, but I'm lucky because I just don't want to do any of that stuff anyway. I'm not interested in having sort of big brand deals in any of my videos. I'm fortunate to be in a position where I'm making enough money from what I'm doing that I can, I can live on it and, you know, joining YouTube, my passion was never to make as much money as I possibly could, it was to make the best videos that I could. Um, and that's not to say that I've never done any brand integrations and stuff before, but that's sort of uh, my preference is always to do that stuff in a way that I'm not actually earning any money from it, if I can. Um, like I had one experience where I went to Pixar Studios and that was, I made a couple of videos about that trip. Um, and uh, for them, that was, uh, it, it was it was when they were uh, re releasing Toy Story 3, so I have no idea if the videos that I made out of that trip had anything to do with the success of that movie. Um, <laughs> but um, Disney liked the videos that I made for them and I got to go on uh, had a cool experience and uh, I you know, didn't want to earn any money from the, the trip because I wanted to make sure my opinions of the film had some integrity behind them. So for me, yeah, I, I think it's, it's an important thing to, to think about is if you're an independent, like, um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of beneficial to me in, in that sense because I just I have no interest in fixing out those, those deals. That's, that's not why I'm in YouTube. We, we definitely want to be exploring those options. We can't do them ourselves. So that's definitely one of the big value adds up networks uh, is that ability that they're trying to build out that whole unit at each of the, these places. I think that you would just hope that there's better terms in your contract of just the types of things that if they don't reach, you know, 
a certain amount of revenue for you in, in that regard, or you know, if you're there with them for a year and they didn't literally do a thing, then like you shouldn't be exclusive to them giving you those deals anymore. They do not provide you with that. Like there's just a you know, you should be able to figure out negotiation to not make yourself completely locked up with them forever with your how long some of these deals end up looking when you look at the contracts and if they're not providing you any value, again, that they shouldn't be taking revenue from dollar one of your own stuff and they should be splitting those deals that they bring you. Uh, you know, trying to be much more flexible, I'd love to see the networks be much more flexible. Your sole reason for joining a network should not be the brand deals. Granted, yes, that's a value add, but I feel like all the networks would even agree that like they're doing everything they can in a lot of cases, but they can't guarantee it. They're not going to necessarily be able to get a brand to do whatever you specifically do. So that could definitely be part of the equation. Oh, maybe there's that opportunity. But like he's saying, if they have failed, there should be a way for you to then be able to get those brand opportunities in other ways if they are unable to do it after a period of time, if that's the primary reason that you're joining. Very good. So before we open this up to audience Q&A, I know if there's an established creator out there, they have a fairly large community of guys like you that they can, they can talk to if they're considering joining a network. But what advice would you guys give a new channel uh, that's debating on it, fairly small, maybe a few thousand subscribers, and uh, what expectations they should have for you know, certain things going into whether or not they should, they should join a network? Uh, what advice would you give them? Uh, I think you know you want to make sure that you're aligning yourself with a network that, um, to borrow from the tips of earlier, is like similar DNA. So um, you know, are are the um, other channels in the network um, with the, the same goal? Um, will I be able to grow my audience because now I'm sort of aligned with whether it's the channel partners in the network or the network itself? Um, and then you know, as I mentioned before, testimonials. Um, really understanding what you're currently making um, and earning on your channel and, and what the network is saying that they could actually um, uh, help you grow in that regard. I would say get to know the people at the network. I mean, that's who you're going to be working with. That's who you're going to be you know, talking with on a regular basis. Um, and that's really important. And like these guys said earlier, like maybe try to find out who else is in that network or who was in the network because there's probably a lot of research you can do you know, before you just jump into a partnership together. Uh, and set expectations, you know. Our, a lot of our deals are very different uh, because frankly the creators are looking for different things. Like we have creators who don't want brand deals, who have turned down brand deals from us. It's just not what they want to do and that's fine. Uh, we have other people that, you know, you know, if they're in Los Angeles, maybe they want, for a special project, they might want to use some of our space and we're absolutely open to that. Uh, you know, we don't lend production support day in and day out, but if there's a special project or part of a brand deal, you know, absolutely, you know, we're in this together. Um, we're just setting expectations for, you know, what the partnership is intended to do. And I was going to say, it's, it's important to do your due diligence. Um, there are some red flags that you can look for, so things like perpetuity contract, right? Just don't sign a perpetuity contract or things like that. And um, you know, it's, but I don't think it's black or white. I don't think it's join a network or not join a network. We have some channels that are working with five different networks, and we're not necessarily underneath the single network. Like they work with one for digital rights management, one for channel optimization, one for sales. So, um, and, or you can work with third parties. So there's so many different options out there. I don't think you need to just say, well, it's, I'm either in a network or I'm out of the network. But again, just do your research. We also have a certification program. We're, we're requiring that networks pass the certification, so you'll be able to see which networks um, do that. share like, what constitutes certification? Because I've seen horrible things that would be against it from certified networks. So like, wh where's the judge? And even then, is there really, this is, I guess, different. Like, is there even oversight over that? Like, if you find out that there's a perpetuity contract floating around now somewhere, are you going to now say that X network that has 10,000 people is not a network anymore? Is there any consequences? from YouTube's side that they'll actually go through with to a uh, network if something like that's happening? <laughs> yeah, so what, so what are the horrible things you're talking about? Like the first ones that you said? You said there's some horrible things going on that There's perpetuity contracts, there's right of first refusal stuff that gets very complicated where like anything that they make, you know, if they got a deal open on another medium, they would have to, they have the right to match it. There's 
There's uh, taking, it's putting value things on there, like join us and get a custom thumbnail. There's, we can, don't, should a lawyer look at this? Hey, you could, but you don't have to. You know, like, we can have a conversation offline about um, a bunch of other stuff I'm not talking about like that, but. Or even, yeah, or even uh, reports, like, actually even if they're paying people what they say they're supposed to be making. How, how could anybody actually know that? Because it goes right to them and they're not giving right, full right, reports. Right, right, because a child, right? And that's something you need to look out for because even though there's not a lot of transparency in that, we're, we are trying to, so for, for the certification, we do have certain requirements. You know, partners need to be in good standing. When we found out about the things like the perpetuity contracts, we tried to go out in the marketplace, and, and, and I think for the most part, they've been discontinued um, for a lot of the dollars. Um, because that was, we realized that that was perhaps damaging to the ecosystem. And we do have a feedback mechanism Internally, if, we're, if we find some of these networks to be out of line or to be in bad behavior, sometimes we need evidence and you can't always get it. Um, now, if you are certified and then you, you fall out of good standing, we will take that away from you. So, we, you know, we're, so we're working, you know, it's, it's, we're working on building a feedback mechanism in our process to ensure that you know, the ecosystem is protected and we do want to make sure that that is balanced and that channels don't feel like they're disadvantaged if they're not in the outside of or just to add to the other, uh, you know, get to know, you know, the people at, at the network, get to know a lawyer also, <laughs> uh, and somebody that understands these things. So if there's, you know, I, I don't know, it, hopefully a list will come out at some point of lawyers that know this space to some degree, because that's also a problem to go to an entertainment where they might not know how the digital space works and look like you get you a good deal and negotiate you a good deal. And also, it depends on the type of content you make. Because if you're a gameplay person and you're doing video games, you know, if you're not with a network, you not you pretty much won't make any revenue on YouTube. But if you join the network, they already have content ID set up and such, and so you won't have to wait for a week for your video to possibly get monetized. If you're an independent partner or not even or just trying to monetize your videos, if you're in a network, you're gonna get monetized on your gameplay videos. If you're not, you know, we should have left you know, a bunch of people in the dark recently. All those people that were making a bunch of money had to go and sign with random networks because by themselves, they couldn't monetize their videos anymore. Well, they can. So, so they anyone could want, no, that, was, that, was, that was a few years ago. No, 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 no. This is no, there is, there's a channel with a million subscribers that left Machinima and could not get ads on anything. And we brought this to YouTube's attention to what to do. And there is a system that ultimately, yes, they can give them the issue. And this is a YouTube issue where I do feel it ties into the networks because it's getting to a place now that creators that we know that are smaller, that are state independent, or even the networks, end up coming to us for help because we don't even have all the answers where they're like, this is killing me. I have to send all this verification material to YouTube for every single video I make now, even though there's no reason for it, it's been that before. The auto ad feature is something that should have some type of rule for whether you're in a network or not or something to be like, you get turned that on, so that's not something that forces someone to join a network because it's starting to happen more and more. Well, that's your, so you're talking about the monetization review policy, and you know, as you build up a quality score, um, but a lot of network. But we're actually so that's that's the, those are some faults of our system that we're working through, and those should be fixed right? very soon. So I, I really, you know, that's but but you do build up a quality score, and you will get through the monetization review system, so you won't be at disadvantage regardless of whether or not you're. All right, well, let's go ahead and open up some audience Q&A real fast. <laughs> Could I just say quickly, just, just coming back to that, that point of, um, yeah, figuring out if you should be joining a network or not. I think in lieu of not being able to, add, like, uh, as far as I'm aware, like, the, the, the sort of average con contract that you get will, will be you know, like about a year or so, I don't know, of any sort of smaller ones than that. So in lieu of not being able to just sort of, like, try out a YouTube network, my experience, YouTubers love to bitch about the network experience that they, they have, and so I feel like the best possible like opportunity that you'll have to find out about YouTubers' experiences with networks is right here. So I would encourage anybody, if you've had experience with a network, to tell it, tell that experience to the person next to you, and sort of just share those experiences possible so that we can all learn from each other's mistakes. Don't be afraid of sharing your experiences. It's only going to help everything. The only reason that things, the networks have gotten as good as they have been to this day is because people have come out and been willing to put their stories out there. Because the network started in a really bad place. And people putting things on Reddit, their perpetuity contracts out there in videos, that's what helps change the space. So the more you do that, the more it's going to get better and better for the creators. So I have a two-pronged question. First for the client brother.
great panelists in your work. Um, why did you join them? And for Charlie, is there a scenario in your mind where you would ever join them? I mean, we're not, as much as a me team, we're not anti-network guys. We've never been. <laughs> very early with Maker Studios when this was all starting. We had a lot of ideals that exist inside of what this can be that we believe in and think there's um, amazing things that networks are even currently doing and can grow to become better in the future. And I would really love to see the networks actually own up to them saying they're creator first or saying that they're all for the creator. And, well, let's not be so traditional media about the way we do these things. And right now it is very, very traditional. Yeah. And I, well, I just say that like being, we've gotten to a point of where we are with our subscriber base and the leverage we have, we, we are able to completely dictate what that deal is going to be. So, though I can't say what our deal is, you know, it's it's mutually beneficial for what we are specifically wanting. And we, when we are able to talk to, you know, crowds like this, we try to do our best to scare the crap out of you, so that you don't let yourself get taken advantage of, because we know that you're not in that position that we are to be able to dictate those things. And the more that you can actually show that, you know, you, you do have a voice, you are the reason these companies are even existing, you know, because all of you guys are joining these places. So you should have way more power than they're letting you have. And so we try to just tell you everything possible that you should be in fear of. We don't tend to really, you know, deal with those things anymore because of where we've gotten, we're able to dictate those much better. Sean? Um, I'm, I'm a bit on the fence about whether I want to make sure that I'm getting more money from a network without having to have those sort of... Because when I was with a network, I wasn't earning any extra money from working with them, and they weren't any, any money from me, simply because I knew that the way that they were able to make extra money for me was through uh, selling the premium ads, which were just those pre-rolls, the unskippable ones that I hate whenever I watch YouTube. Um, then they will sometimes make or break for me whether I will even bother watching a video if there's like a 20 second ad on it. So um, for me it's either find a way for me to make more money without having to have those really annoying adverts or accept that I'm going to that you're not going to make any money from me unless you really work on projects with me that are outside of that realm of like getting extra advertising um, and being happy to be earning less because of that. Um, and also just wanting them to care enough to sort of take the initiative to figure out how they can help my channel grow because I did feel like um, I had to be the one sort of um, starting to have meetings with them and telling them what it was, that it's, yeah, what. Like yeah, just just poking them to be like, can you can you help me now? Or like, what is it that I can do? Um, and I feel like it's yeah. So with that, it would be impossible for me to want to be a part of one of those networks with an insane amount of people under them. I would really have to be. I I, I want to be talking to actual real human beings about um, what they could do to help build up my channel. But as it is, I'm I mean I'm I feel like I get more than enough support by just YouTube on its own than I. Um, yeah, then I, like any, anything that I'm getting from, any, anything that I could feasibly get from YouTube Network, I currently get from just YouTube, the company anyway, in terms of having the creative space in, uh, in London. And also, um, uh, we're part of a project called CIP, the Creator Innovation um, Program, which uh, helped me get funding to make short films that I'm currently doing at the moment. And so, I, I feel like, YouTube, the company themselves, at least the team in London, are willing to take that initiative to be like, hey, we want to, you should be doing this, this will be better for you, and sort of poking me in that way. So. We got three minutes before she mugs me in this back alley here, so we want to burn <laughs> That's right. some questions really fast. <laughs> Sorry for that little answer. So, the perspective of most of the, the content creators on the panel is you guys have built a large audience, right? So, you guys have unique leverage that someone maybe with one or two thousand subscribers doesn't. So my question, I guess, is for Courtney. Um, if you're a small, independent uh, content creator on YouTube and you're trying to decide whether to join the network or not, you know, YouTube has their own sales force of 12,000 people, but they're selling a bunch of different products as well, not just YouTube. And there's no way that, I mean, there's millions of channels, right? So there's no way a salesperson at YouTube is gonna have is going to be able to, to speak to thousands of channels which, with only a thousand or two thousand subscribers. 
So is there, in, in YouTube's point of view, or, or maybe in some of the content creators' point of view, is there a threshold where it doesn't matter? Because it, it appears to me that if you're a small channel, you're going to be better served by joining a network that maybe can have more of a personal relationship with you. When you get to the size of some of you guys, it doesn't really matter. Everybody is going to be paying attention to you on the sales side because you guys are the big shiny object. So I don't know if if you know what that number is, if it's sort of. So again, I, mean, I really think it depends on what your objective is as a channel and right. what you're trying to accomplish. But if you go and you join a network that has 75,000 channels, are you really going to be getting any more support than if you're working with YouTube? And we have a really great YouTube partner program. Um, and we do offer support, we have online support, we have programming strategies, even for smaller channels. And you can, as, you, as you build up your subscriber base um, and, and your global audience, you, you'll continue to get more support from YouTube. But you know, we are looking at um, leveling playing field even more for, for these channels. So I think you just need to look at um, what are you trying to accomplish? Is it, is it you want to do the branded integration deals? Do you want to be part of it? part of network, the sales team, um, will that really help? Is it worth the cost? Um, but I, I, don't, I feel that you, know, you can be successful outside of the network because of how great the YouTube partner program is. Even if you're small family? Yes. And in, the, in the back, we got like one minute before she gets the building club out. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Who are you pointing at? It, you. Okay. Uh, so I know, uh, or at least the stuff uh, is that networks get very, very detailed and nitty gritty uh, demographic information about who's watching whose channels, what ads are clicking, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't seem that that transparency is going to us, um, at least through the MCNs that I've experienced. Um, is there any plans to make that more transparent to the creator so that we, if perhaps we grow with the, with the network, we get to a certain point where brands are directly approaching us or, or we want to maybe branch out, we can know who our audience is and, and what they like and what they're watching and what ads they're clicking. Because right now I've got no clue. Uh, what I, I don't know what one there's there's like two pretty much like things that and of course there's API things that other companies are doing you could try to even sign up with those and maybe just go around the network and to get that information but there's the network that you're in I'm not sure which one it is they should be definitely supplying you with basic analytics you should yeah. probably see the analytics and then you <coughs> should if you didn't you should have put in your contract to get like a breakout of the CMS monthly report that has pretty much like all the very, very specific stats. I, but even YouTube is like constantly trying to build out more tools that get that information. But yeah, we'll just keep pushing, I guess, on your network just to keep telling them that I want that, I want that. You can talk to any stack right here. He's, he's the man when it comes to analytics. I mean, like, YouTube's analytics is, is pretty good. Uh, but. Uh, she's, she's about to beat me up, so um, Vinny and Rafi will be up here for a mugging for uh, some questions or something like that. Uh, I appreciate all you guys coming out here. Step out. Thanks for your uh, faithful coverage on CK. <laughs> Thank you.